In this video, we are going to talk about the predictive power of our model. Uh, the models generally that we create and the path coefficients that we get from those models are basically explaining the relationship uh, that exists between the variables based on the sample data that we have. Now, the next question that we have related to this uh, data is that, is our model able to predict the outcome or the dependent variable if it gets new data? And that is what we call the predictive power. So for that, uh, we need to decide on a few things before we move on towards performing the test that how many parts do we want to divide our data into to be able to uh, judge its explanatory and predictive power. Um, based on one of the rules for the minimum sample size, we say that you should have 50 plus 8 into your individual or you could say independent variables that is the minimum sample size that you should have. So in my uh, in my case, I have uh, how many independent variables I have. Uh, if I if I take it in terms of my final dependent variable, I have five independent variables, and uh, so that would give me five multiplied by eight. And that the final answer would be 40 plus 50, that would be 90. So minimum to be able to perform a test properly, I should have a minimum of 90 of a sample size. Now, I actually have a, a sample that consists of 294 respondents. So if my sample is of 294, uh, how many times can I do, how many parts can I divide it into? If I divide it into, if I divide it by three, I will get uh, somewhere around like um, uh, 95 or 95, you could say, 95 respondents. So this is how many times or how many portions in which I can divide my sample into. So what this procedure will ex exactly do is that it would divide my sample into three different portions then it will take two portions and it will create a regression equation using that those two portions then it will use the independent variables from the one third of the portion and it would test whether uh, the regression equation that it generated is working here to predict the dependent variable or not now, that's the whole test that is all about it. And then in that manner, it would judge whether my model has a predictive power or it doesn't have a predictive power. Now, we are going on to the SPSS, sorry, not SPSS, PLS is smart, and we'll look into uh, the test. This is my PLS is smart. This is my model that I have here. Now, I'll go to calculate. I'll go to PLS predict. Now it's asking me number of folds. Number of folds is the number of portions in which I want to divide my sample. I uh, talked about it at length that how many portions that I would want my sample to be divided into. The maximum I can afford is three. And um, uh, technically you should have this many, the same number of repetitions as many you have the folds. The maximum that you can have is 10 over here. But uh, it can only work if you have a very small number of independent variables or your sample size is quite large. Then only you can go with 10. So I'll start calculation now. This is my calculation. It works really fast. Now, where do we need to, what do we need to look at? The first thing that we will do is that we will go to this MV prediction summary. Copy that. Take it to Excel. Create a new file. Okay. Go back. Go to LM portion here. Copy that. And come back to Excel. 
and see what's happening here. All right, so this is our PLS result. I'm labeling it PLS, and this is my LM result. Now, PLS result are the ones that we have gotten from the two samples, or you could say two third of the sample. And the LM portion is the one that is the learning model, like, you know, where it's testing our data. So what do we need to look at first? This is the column that we need to look at first that we have here. The values that we have here, <clears throat> they must be greater than they must be greater than zero. If they are greater than zero, it means that it, there is some prediction power within our model and we can proceed on for the next comparison. So this is first thing that we are going to report that prediction Q, R, uh, Q square predict. What's the value of that? If it is greater or smaller, uh, it should be greater than zero. Only then you can continue with the whole process. Now, next thing that you need to look at is these two columns that we have here. Now, this one, RMSE. And RMSE over here. All right. Now, RMSE greater in LM is a good news. Greater than PLS is a good news. So keep on highlighting the cells which have a greater value. Uh, this is a greater value, good. This one is also a greater value, good. This one is also a value greater than this one over here. This is a smaller value, not that a good news. Okay, this one is also a greater value, good. This one is a smaller value. This one is a greater value. Yes, it's greater than my PLS. This one is also greater. And this one again is a greater value. Good. So now the conditions are three when you are analyzing or you are checking these values. If none of your value in the LM model is greater than the PLS model, then it means your model does not have any predictive power. If minority, if minority of these values are greater than these over here, like minority of LM values are greater than the PLS values, then it means that your model has small predictive power. But if majority majority of the variables or majority of the items RMSE in learning model is greater than um, RMSE of PLS model, then it means your model has moderate predictive power. If all of them if all of these are greater than these value over here, then your model has a very high level of predictive power. So the conditions are none, minority, a majority, and all. Okay, LM greater than PLS, okay? If this is the case, or I can just simply write it more elaboratively, I can say that RMSE in LM is greater than PLS. All right, so in that case, I would say it has no predictive power. Power. No, 
low, moderate, and here high. So that's all what we do in the predictive power test, and this is how it is performed. I hope you can do it in your model too.